and welcome back to your autism game plan. I'm Joya Vanderlin, a family nurse practitioner, a functional medicine specialist, and an autism mom. Today we're going to be talking about how you can avoid certain toxins in foods. So foods that we eat, foods that we feed our kids. I'm not going to mention every single toxin, but I'm kind of going to go over the main ones, the most harmful ones, the most, the most common ones that you might encounter. Glyphosate, or Roundup as it's commonly known, is a really common toxin that's found in a lot of our foods. Dr. Stephanie Seneff has done a lot of research on this, and if you follow her on social media or go to her website, you can look up all the research that she does and that she other research that she hasn't done that she shares. It's really quite compelling. Um, of concern too is a lot of the genetically modified foods or GMOs um, contain glyphosate in them and so that's a good reason to avoid those as well. If you're looking for a resource of you know how can you do the best job possible avoiding glyphosate and GMOs even if you're not able to buy all, all organic or find all organic foods there's a website called the EWG or the Environmental Workers Group so ewg.org and they publish a list I believe they update it every year of the clean 15 and the dirty dozen so dirty dozen those are the foods that you want to avoid conventional and buy organic the clean 15 are probably okay to buy non-organic because they don't tend to be as heavily pesticided as the dirty dozen so clean 15 dirty dozen with the ewg bpa or bisphenol a is another toxin that we want to avoid typically bpa we think of um, being in plastic so they're in the news we've seen um, a lot of reporting on bpa in water bottles and how now a lot of them are bpa free okay that's great but also they can be in our food containers and even in canned goods because a lot of the insides of the cans are lined with a certain type of plastic or this this bpa so the trick is don't eat out of plastic avoid processed foods as much as possible and that'll give you your best chance of avoiding bpa RBGH and RBST are hormones, growth hormones that are used um, in, in cattle to have them produce more milk. And so then that ends up in their milk. It can cause increased risk of certain cancers and other things. So generally better to avoid those things. Now, this is in dairy products and Generally, a lot of our kids are going to do better dairy-free anyways, but if you are doing dairy or if you must do dairy for certain things, try looking for hormone-free and organic dairy products as much as possible. And many times they're actually labeled as RBST-free. So artificial food colorings, artificial food dyes like Red 40, um, there's blue, uh, blue number five, I believe. Um, there's yellow number five. Any kind of artificial food coloring that like that that's labeled as just a color, blue, and then a number or blue lake or whatever. Those are all things that you want to avoid. What are they? Where do they come from? They're chemicals. They're toxins. We don't want those in our kids' bodies or our bodies. So look for foods, especially if they're sort of colored foods, cereals, chips, especially candies are really notorious for this. Look for candies that are colored with um, natural food dyes, turmeric, um, spirulina, beetroot powder. Lots of times those can be used to produce color in foods rather than using these toxic um, chemicals. And when you look at the research, there, there's research showing um, concern with these food dyes in terms of various neurologic um, conditions. Um, including ADHD. So the food dyes, the artificial food colorings, we really want to try and avoid those as best we can. So those are just a few of the top or most common food uh, toxins that we encounter. I hope this has taught you a little bit um, of new information and maybe opened your eyes to things you did not know before. Um, remember, read the labels because if you turn that box around or the can around and have a read through the ingredients, you may find things that surprise you that you actually don't want your child eating. Um, so just being aware really is the first step and then you can make a choice from there. Thank you again for joining me today. Remember, 
be gentle with yourself. You're doing a great job.